uh, sustained during the game. Um, KJ Costello and Davis Mills still in that questionable category. Uh, neither guy could go last week. Um, you know, KJ will be a partial participant in practice today. Um, Davis, I don't believe, will go do anything today and possibly maybe do something on the field tomorrow. We'll see. Um, Kendall Williamson uh, missed the last game, practiced a little bit last night, should get a limited opportunity to practice again today. So hopefully we can get him back in the fold as well. Well, the uh, it was pretty up front. We didn't move the ball very well. Um, first drive and the last drive. Um, first drive, uh, we made the throws. We got protections. We made the catches. Made some nice runs. Last drive, uh, the same. And when we can do that, we can move the ball. Um, throughout the game, offensively, uh, has been our, our bugaboo call it whatever you want an experience or whatever but too many negative plays um, I think we averaged uh, less than less than two yards a carry or whatever it was running the football um, which is not us it's just not been us um, they're an active front um, they pressured us more than they than they have pretty much during the year but um, still things that we were anticipating especially starting a first time start at quarterback anticipate a little bit more pressure um, didn't handle it very well. Uh, did not get the production from the quarterback position. Uh, at the same time, uh, we had balls deflected and had negative plays that pushed us back. Um, so uh, as in early in the year, we're trying to play with second and long and third and long, those are really difficult downs. Um, defensively, the majority of the game, we played really well. Um, we just let out too many explosive plays. Um, I think they had five plays over 20 yards. Uh, two plays over 50. Now, some of those you're going to give up to this quarterback. Uh, this quarterback special. Um, he's got that it factor. Um, very comfortable. Uh, very calm. Uh, we were in his face a bunch. Only sacked him really once. Uh, but we made him scramble. We made him move. He threw the ball away. And a couple times he got out with his legs. And yeah, that's what uh, great athletes do. Uh, this kid's more than an athlete, though. This kid's got a chance to be a special quarterback. And... Uh, we gave him too many opportunities. Didn't keep him hemmed in. Um, you know, like I said, for the most part, we gave really good effort on the defensive side. Um, but those those big explosive plays hurt us. Um, special teams wise, uh, it was one of our better special teams games. Um, blocked a punt for a touchdown. Been close all year. Uh, great opportunity for those guys uh, to get that done. That was great to see. Um, the problem is on our kickoff. We uh, we let the guy out. You know, we've been great on kickoff return all year. Uh, we we had him hemmed in inside the twenty yard line, let him escape, um, and that's where Jet got hurt. So uh, compounding issues there. Uh, the, the 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 hard part is we didn't move the ball on off on offense. We didn't score on offense, um, and too many explosive plays on defense. Those things cloud um, some outstanding efforts. You know, Ryan Sanborn coming in as a true freshman, um, handling the punting duties and the kickoff duties and the PAT field goal duties. Um, that is outstanding. Um, you know, uh, uh, Colby, Colby Parkinson um, was really, really good. There's some really tough balls trying to make, but run game, pass game, thought he did really well. Um, so there, there were a lot of individual performances. Um, Thomas Booker continues to grow and mature and make plays and be very, very active. Um, so, yeah, the, the, our inside linebackers had a, had a good game as well. So there were some good individual performances. But bottom line is um, we've got to get stops on defense. We can't give up explosive plays, in particular those that go for scores. And then offensively, we have to keep the ball away from people, move the ball down the field and get in the, get in the red zone and score touchdowns. Uh, there's movement and we didn't block it. Um, 
Uh, they, they, was, the, like I said, during the game, they were very active in their front seven. Um, and we didn't handle it. Um, you know, it was a couple of core plays that we run down there. And so we're really ready for a lot of things that they do. And, um, you know, we had a guy, we, we gave a penetration. And um, Cam Scarlett, who's really been good for really three years in short yards goal line situations, um, you know, didn't have a chance to get back to the line of scrimmage. So we had to take the field goal. Well, uh, one of the things I'm very happy with is we recruit the right guys. And uh, we've got a great mentality on the football team, got very good leadership. Um, you know, we're guiding some of the young guys through a difficult process, trying to be great examples for them is how you, this is how you handle difficult situations. Um, handle with your mentality, your work ethic, um, and your, your approach to uh, doing what you're supposed to do. Um, we've got some great examples of that all across the, the entire team. Um, you know, the, 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 the disappointments are, um, they're out there. They're obvious. Um, you know, our execution as coaches will continue to try to make sure we're putting guys in position to be successful. Um, so we're always looking at everything that we're doing and making sure that uh, we give them the best opportunity and then hold the guys to, to their responsibilities. And um, do what we do, but do it better as we continue to accent and augment what we do on a week to week basis. Building on what you were just saying, you know, a few times in which you've talked about how sometimes the team looks like they've lost the joy for the game and you want them to continue to have it. Do you still do you see that with this team at all? And how do you, I guess, as a coaching staff and as the captains of the leadership council try to sort of raise the spirits of the team when maybe things aren't necessarily going? I'm not in the business of raising people's spirits. Um, uh, these guys have a finite amount of time to play this game. And um, the high percentage of them understand that and appreciate that and play and practice with energy and passion. Um, and But at the same time, that's just the minimum. That's the bare minimum is coming ready to play and fired up to play and excited to play. Um, so uh, that's, uh, like I said, that's, that's the bare minimum. Um, we 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 just we didn't play well Thursday night, and um, those are hard things to put your finger on. Um, not in the mid, I'm not in the business either of of looking for excuses or asking for excuses. Um, it's on us to go out there and play well. Um, told the guys last week, there's no third column, you know, win loss and then hey, but it's okay, you know, the 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 it's okay column. Well, you've got injuries, so it's okay. There's no other column. So um, whoever's healthy, we got to get them ready to play. we got to go out there and execute. When you talk about putting players in sort of the best positions to succeed, um, when you went back and kind of reevaluated the game. It's an ongoing struggle. That's my answer. I, try, I can't answer it any different. Uh, without getting into specifics, um, there were a lot of things that we really liked running the ball that we we didn't do well. We didn't execute. Did not want to turn this into a drop back passing game, um, but it it had it shifted to that as we were down and couldn't move the ball. Um, uh, we had some protection issues early, um, but at the same time, uh, we really like our tight ends and receivers in the passing game. So we try to give those guys opportunities to make plays. Um, we got to get the protection. We got to get the make the throws. We got to make the catches. Um, but the bottom line is, um, uh, what we did in the Washington game is what we want to do. What we did in the Oregon State game is what we want to do, which is be pretty balanced run and pass, um, and be able to run the ball for efficiency as well as explosive plays. Um, if you can't do that, then you become one sided, and that's not the game we want to play. Any 
uh, none of those guys that we're hoping to get back have made any significant strides. Um, uh, when when they do, I'll, I'll let you know if those guys start practicing again. But we're not there yet. There's a, there's a lot of guys in that category with Jacob and Ricky and uh, Devery Hamilton um, that we're hoping to get back before the end of the season, but they haven't made significant significant progress yet. With that unit, I'm wondering, it was kind of a short rotation. They wanted to field a lot. You kind of, I don't know if great on the curve is the right phrase, but when you look at what they were able to do and then they were kind of finally breakdowns when they wanted to field a lot, does that come in and inform what you're watching right now? Um, not necessarily. You know, you don't you don't take that into account. It's the reason why you train. Uh, you train to, to be able to play as many plays as it takes and play them all at a high level. Um, and execute, uh, regardless if it's, you know, you're on the field for 50 or 85 um, or 90. So, um, but there's there's no curve. Can you talk about having the Stewart head back and kind of what he brings uh, defense? Yeah, Stewart, Stewart's been great the last few games in particular. Um, you know, first of all, on the special team side, uh, we've missed his speed and athleticism on the coverage units. Uh, he does a great job of closing closing down and making plays or at least tying up multiple blockers so somebody else can make a play. So that's where we've missed him really early on. But then with Kendall getting hurt and um, him being able to go in there and place him at safety, you see his speed and athleticism. He's been a great blitzer. He's been really good in coverage. Um, he's been a good tackler also. And um, that's that's that what we're looking forward to seeing early on in training camp um, and then coming into the season was giving us another guy in that secondary um, that has speed and athleticism um, playing against these spread teams. You need guys that can go out there and run and make, make tackles in the open field. Uh, for right now, yes. Uh, we've we've kind of had a little cattle call. Anybody else on the team that uh, can can help with those duties? And we found a couple of possibilities. Um, but for the most part, Ryan's going to take those uh, responsibilities on. Look at Jack's play on Saturday, or on Thursday, sorry. Um, how do you assess just how he performed pre snap and getting into the right plays and the right looks? Uh, gosh, I want to say the majority of time was, was very good. Pre snap was really good. Um, Post snap, you know. Didn't play as well as he wanted to. Didn't play as well as we needed him to. And at the same time, it's drawing that line between his responsibilities and others. Whereas, for the most part, all you see is the quarterback. Did he make the throw or not make the throw? You know, those three deflected balls um, were big. Two of those we had Mike Wilson running. Um, it was throwing the ball in the window between guys. It was going great to see him catch and run. Um, missed a couple of throws. Um, had a couple of guys that had a chance to make good catches or tough catches um, so um, the the passing game wasn't what we needed it to be uh, for a lot of very, very variable reasons um, but as far as Jack is concerned um, played well in the first series and the last series um, and in between was okay at times and some things were not okay Yeah, I, I would say the the, the two veterans um, playing really well. You know, I think uh, what's gotten lost in a lot of this is you know, Foster Sorrell's been playing his best football. Um, big, athletic, strong, um, knows what to do. Um, has been great. You know, with a with a freshman next to him, make sure he communicates to him, make sure he knows what he's doing. Um, you know, like he and Jake um, are really working well together uh, on the right side. I think Drew Dahlman. Um, really all year has been really good. He's been really good. Um, worked extremely hard. He's become a leader uh, on the offensive line, leader on the offense. Um, so our two veterans, I think, are playing really well. Um, I think our young guys, I think they're all going to be really good. Um, they have their moments where uh, inexperience shows up, you know, um, just on playing against guys that are a little bit older that have a few more tricks, 
you know, subtle moves and, and, and uh, late secondary moves that um, we work with these guys on a, a, a ton where, where every snap they play is a learning experience. Some things they do extremely well. And we say, okay, that was great, but hey, make sure you're anchoring, um, you know, because this guy's going to go speed to power. So there's a lot of things that they're, they're learning during the process um, that uh, sometimes you learn when things go right. Sometimes you learn when things go wrong. Can you talk about the, the challenges that Arizona presents? Yeah. Um, uh, first of all, on their offensive side, I know they've, they've had some ups and downs on the offensive side, but there are moments where Khalil Tate looks like one of the best offensive skill position players in America. Um, so being able to corral him and keep him uh, under wraps um, is, is, a, is a priority. Uh, uh, on the defensive side, uh, they've got great movement. They've got size up front. They've got speed in the secondary. Um, but most importantly for us, we have to be able to run the football. Um, uh, it's part of our identity. Um, when we played our best football, we've been able to run it. Um, but we're not going to run it just to run it. You know, if we're running a whole bunch and getting second to 10, um, that doesn't help us. We need to run the ball with efficiency. Um, these guys at times have been have been stout. Um, they've been active. Um, at times they haven't. So um, against our our uneven play versus their uneven play uh, should be interesting. Um, but for us, we got to focus on us and being able to be efficient and stay in positive down distances and then know those explosive plays will come when we're in a rhythm. Curious, do you look outside of the program to anyone for advice about how they handle things? And if so, who might that be to kind of talk, troubleshoot outside of the program? Uh, periodically. Uh, there are people that I, I keep in touch with. Uh, I, I won't say who right now, but um, there's a good coaching community. Um, uh, and this is, a, this is just a new challenge. It's a different challenge, right? The... The obvious challenges are the opposing team, getting your best out of your players, trying to play at the highest level, trying to compete and win. Um, and these are those unexpected challenges, and but they need to be approached the same. Um, sitting around complaining about them doesn't, doesn't help. Um, being upset about them doesn't help. Um, it's, okay, here's our challenge. What can we do this week to, to help our guys go out there and be successful? So each week is a bit of a puzzle. Um, we have to continue to lean on our, our leadership, lean on our work ethic. Um, you know, it's a challenging to, to the coaches, but hey, this is our job. It's what we do. Um, we care about our guys. We want them to go out to be and be successful and help them, give them the tools to be to be successful. Um, so week to week, it's a, it's a new challenge, and we have to accept those and embrace them um, and uh, get the most out of our, our situation. Well, you, you start with your responsibilities, and in particular, uh, you know, to sound like an old school football coach, who's got contain on both sides, right? If he runs up the middle, at the very least, hopefully we can collapse on him. If he gets outside and gets to the sidelines, you know, this guy could just be in the end zone very, very quickly. So realizing that we have to have contain, that we have to try to keep him in. Um, if he does scramble, we have to converge on him and uh, try not to necessarily nose him up. Because the guy, I mean, he's like you know, a basketball player, you know, a great point guard. Like he knows him up. He can make you move, make you miss. If you keep him on an edge, at least you're forcing him one way, hopefully force him to your help. Um, but yeah, if you get so enamored with tying everybody to him, uh, we can't lose sight of our coverage down the field because the guy's got a strong arm. He can throw it a long way. Um, he can make those deep ball throws. Yeah, uh, very good pocket passer, um, uh, but good movement in the pocket also. Um, not the dangerous run threat uh, that that Khalil Tate is, um, but at the same time, it's a it's a part of their offense. Uh, the quarterback being agile and being being able to move. Um, uh, let's follow Coach Sumlin everywhere he's been. Um, so 
for us um, that there is a a drastic difference in the athleticism of the quarterbacks. Um, so we have to be alert for whichever one is in. Um, but when closing, especially, we have to be cognizant of where our help is and make sure that we get as many guys to them as possible. And curious, given everything going on this season, there's another group of people that you guys are communicating with outside the program, and, and that's recruits. Obviously, without getting into specifics about individuals, how are you and, and the staff kind of communicating with them about what you guys are dealing with within the program? Because obviously, they have a vested interest in, in you knowing. Yeah, and the guys that we're looking for, um, uh, I'm not going to make a recruiting speech, but um, this place is special. It's a special place with special people. Um, we've had great success here. Um, I don't know what the average is uh, over the last nine years, but somewhere around 10 wins. So it's not like um, we haven't had success. It's not like we're trying to find out how to success, have success. We know how to have success. We know how to play great football. We know how to put guys in the NFL. We also know how to get, have guys graduate with unbelievable degrees. Um, so we know how to do that. Uh, this is a difficult, difficult season. Um, but as much as anything, when our guys especially come and visit, we talk about um, hang out with our guys, see the character of our football players, um, come to practice, uh, watch how hard our guys work and, and how, how bonded they are together. Um, you know, um, turn to just that, that, uh, that Washington game two weeks ago. Um, it's one of the best stories uh, of, of the of the year in college football, being able to have all of our guys come together and play a great game on national TV against an outstanding opponent. Um, and now it's trying to find a way to do that again and again and again and again um, throughout the rest of the year and end the season on a positive note. Well, with all of our um, all of our players coming back off of missions, uh, there are a lot of, of different rules um, that they have, different rules that we have. Um, so there's not a lot of communication um, allowed, period. Um, but um, we can start back normal once they get back uh, to the United States. Um, we've all gotten those guys back over the summer. So they're able to be with their teammates throughout the summer. Um, so we we talk about those things before the guys ever leave. Um, I believe they communicate they communicate once a week, and it's typically with their families, um, which I think is great, which is healthy. Um, so um, that that in general, that's been a really positive thing for this football team, for those guys to go and have those experiences, many of them different countries, and come back and um, really kind of pour back into this this football team and bring that level of maturity and experience, um, outside world experience uh, to this team. So for all those guys, I think it's been a very, very positive thing. Um, and we hope to continue that. And with bodies, you mentioned about just offensive line contingencies because of the lack of bodies. Dylan Bowles was with the offensive line last week. Are there any other players that kind of made that swap or you still think yeah, we, we have a few emergency contingencies. Uh, we've started to list Tucker Fisk in two different numbers uh, in case he has to go in and, and play on the offensive line for us. He's practiced there as well. Um, so those are just a couple of the contingencies we have. Thank you.
Yeah, I went home. That was super nice. Nice to get away. Sure. I mean, I think that's that's something that often gets neglected when you look at college football in general. Is, you know, um, there's so much scrutiny that I mean, n- not a lot of people often think about like the toll it takes on an individual level or um, on a team level. But I think as a team, you know, I I really do feel like our our attitude and our intention is still there, and I think it's just sharpening our focus and just coming out and executing and and I really I mean I still very much believe in the team the attitude of the team I think it's just reminding guys that you know I mean we've been we've been in tough positions before even if our backs against the wall we know how to fight that's what we need to do Yeah, you know, I think it's with the injuries we have had, I mean, guys are being called upon to step up. And, you know, this happens every year. So that's why, I mean, we train for this. That's why when the freshmen come in the summer, we try to bring them along as fast as possible because a lot of them are going to need to end up playing like you've seen this year. And I think, you know, Loa Kafusi, Anthony Trin, Stephen Heron are guys that have been called to step up and that will continue to do so. And, you know, I'm impressed with their effort and their willingness to contribute. And I think, I think, the future holds good things for them, and um, and they're in a tough spot. I mean, a lot of them haven't had many game reps before, but you know, I think they've they've done pretty well, and I expect more. Uh, Coach Todd was talking about that there was a lot to like from the defensive performance Thursday, and then there would be you know a big play given up, mm-hmm. and you know, I guess in some ways that it was just tough to kind of shut down UCLA for. Sure, and I think it's really it's it's comforting almost to say to yourself like, oh, you know, we played well, but it was just a few big plays, and then it's it's tough to shut down UCLA. I mean, it, the Pac-12 has good offenses, but I mean, if we want to get to where we can be and what we expect of ourselves, um, I mean, we need to play better. And it's 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 nice to say or ch- kind of lie to yourself and be like, oh, it was enough. But, you know, I mean, they're, they're good teams. So they're going to score. I don't mean I don't think that's true. I mean, they were a good team. They were very talented. But, I mean, we, we beat ourselves at quite a few spots. And, yeah, we gave up way too many big plays. So I think our, our effort was – I think the effort was there. But, again, that's something that we struggled with and will continue to need to improve is just our execution. Because, I mean, if we – we could have won the game on defense if we – didn't give up any points or if we gave up seven, right? So clearly our effort was decent, but it wasn't good enough to finish, which is all you really get judged upon in the scheme of things. Sure. I mean, uh, with a lot of those things and um, even with the, the long quarterback run, I mean, it's just um, – it's really just a matter of inches, you know, just a missed tackle here or there, or it's just uh, a misfit barely. And, and that's what's, I think, <laughs> that's what's so important and difficult about football is it's just the minute details really just come to play, especially when you're playing in a division like the Pac-12 where there's so much speed, there's so much talent on offense that you make the smallest mistake that thing, thing can go for 80 yards. So I think that's just, you know, that really needs to be our focus these next couple of weeks is just precision because when we have that, we're a good defense. But when we don't, those things can blow up in our face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely I mean uh, just a great athlete at quarterback probably the best we've seen this season um, escapability is impressive speed's impressive 
really can move around in the pocket well, which is frustrating, uh, especially trying to get him down. But yeah, I mean, that's where our, I mean, our rush lanes, our focus on getting the quarterback down, our focus on not allowing him to have too big a seams is important and covering, covering guys twice so that the rush can get there, things like that. Sure. No, I, I actually I'm happy that we faced an athletic quarterback who could run last week. I think that kind of helps. Uh, I mean, that that was really the fastest quarterback we played all season and we'll probably face a faster one. So I think that was really helpful to kind of get that taste in our mouth and un- understand what we need to do, where our breakdowns happen so we can be better prepared this week. Mm hmm. It's a good question. You know, I think, yeah, I, I obviously we didn't allow as many big plays on uh, versus Washington. I think we um, we had we had a better start versus Washington too, and I think that really helped our confidence get going too. And then I just it was just a matter of just trusting each other, and I think we really did a good job of that. Obviously executed well, and uh, we just didn't have many breakdowns that game and so now that we know we've done that and we've done that quite a few times in the past I mean that's just what we need to set our sights on and try to get back to yeah I mean it's great to have Stu back the guy the guy hits hard I mean it's pretty evident when you turn on the film uh, great tackler fast athletic kid great to have back just depth purposes too i mean we need guys and he's he's been playing well i'm excited to have him back and excited for his future i mean uh you know a lot of 10 personnel i mean i think the biggest thing that i've seen with them that impresses me the most is just the speed at the running back and quarterback positions i mean quarterback will keep it the running back it's super fast. So, I mean, just being able to understand that, a lot of RPOs, but just being prepared for that speed, I think, is going to be the most important part. Okay. Great. Thanks, guys. How do you feel like this last Thursday kind of fit into, I mean, just a week before you guys had a lot of success kind of going on? Um, I mean, I think we were just dealing with a few extra challenges. Like in the game previous, we would only had um, two freshmen aligned at the beginning and then obviously third, like later on in the game. And then um, this game we were, or this Thursday game, we were also down to our third string quarterback. So I think just some growing pains with that. Um, it's just tough anytime you're like the chemistry of the offense is just different. Um, anytime you have a new quarterback and new offensive line or new combination of offensive line. In terms of the position you play, so how do you kind of assess like what happens with the communication along the line? You know, as a tight end, you're typically going to be working pretty closely with mm-hmm. those guys and you know, have to kind of work in concert on you know, when you're staying in and blocking for passing or you know, run plays. Yeah. Uh, sorry, what was the question about? Like, how's the communication? Um, well, there has to be a lot. <laughs> I mean, you have to be talking a lot. And, you know, the center has to be, like, um, super loud and super clear with his calls so that everyone can work off of them. And then, like, as far as what I do more is, um, like, I'll talk to the tackles more, especially, like, Walter, because he's new. And for me, it's mostly just that, because I'm not talking to the guards or anything normally. Um, 
but yeah, just making sure like you're making your calls early, you're making them loud and you're repeating them <laughs> is probably, um, I think like what we need to do and what helps the most, at least from my position, um, in terms of that. You've been told that, uh, you're getting some work amongst the <laughs> <laughs> they might be close to fully adopting you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is that experience like of having to split time? And I mean, I know you did in the spring as well. And what's yeah. that experience like for you? Um, I mean, it's just. Sorry, my phone's gone off. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of noises. Um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> the rumors are true. I have been. <laughs> I have been uh, cycling in with the uh, the offensive line, but um, I don't know. My my take on it is just that we're running out of offensive linemen, so we need someone to step up. And if I'm the guy they want to step up, then I'll do it. Um, hopefully I won't have to. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, just kind of a next guy up mentality. That makes sense. I'm kind of curious, how do you, I guess, like it? I mean, it's obviously a very different job in some ways, but also similar to tight end in some other ways. Yeah, I mean, as a blocking tight end, it's pretty similar. Um, just, I mean, a lot of the steps and a lot of things we do are pretty much the same. Um, and as far as much, as far as like liking it, I, it's something new. Um, and anytime I'm learning something new on the football field, it's a good time. So I've been enjoying it at least for now. I mean, maybe that'll change once I'm get taking hits every play and <laughs> whatnot, but, um, it's been fun so far. Um, I mean, they're a stout defense. Um, I think for me, for me, it don't really um, like look at defenses all so much different. I mean, obviously, personnel wise, you have to know like um, like how certain guys are going to play certain things, like pass pro or like a like an out block or down block or something like that. But for me, I think I'd more think of it as like we have our plays as an offense, and we need to improve on those plays, and we need to understand like where the defense that we're going up against in general lines up. But a lot of times we get something new on game day. And so really what it is is more about us being good on our stuff, on internally, like on our plays and our calls and everything, and less a focus on like what the defense we're going against is doing. Obviously, like obviously we need to know what they're doing. But for me, I think it's just more about what we're doing on, on the offensive side. Just inconsistent. I mean, we weren't executing at a high level. There were opportunities there, um, some opportunities that we missed, and some that aren't necessarily super obvious um, as you watch the game. But when you go back and look on film, you know we're one block away here, we're uh, one cut here, and you know we're bursting like a sixty or I don't know how long, but a big play or a touchdown. You know, so um, I think it's just we didn't really make the plays when we had to, and we um, were extremely inconsistent um but those are both things that we can improve on what are your memories of your, your dad's career uh, <laughs> on the whole world he retired but um is he still a, a sounding board for you in terms of the game and, and kind of what sort of things have you sort of taken from him or mm -hmm. maybe that have helped you um i mean so well, first, my dad retired when I was six, so I got to see um, a little bit of his NFL life, but more so, um, he was actually uh, my D-line coach in high school, um, and I mean, obviously, I don't play D-line anymore, but um, just learning from him, I think, or like what I learned from him is just uh, like a work ethic and a attention to like very small like technical details in terms of like steps and like, um, like firing your hips and things that... Um, that I'm not sure if everyone else got in high school or not, but um, at least <laughs> for me, I think my dad helped me a lot with like, just just the attention to detail, like on small, like very technical parts of blocking or just football in general. And you still talk to him regularly as a sounding board? Yeah, I would say I do. I mean, not quite as much, cause you know, we're not practicing every day together, but yeah, right. uh, yeah I definitely still take his advice.
your bulldozing guy. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I think he was pretty excited. It's uh, um, I don't know. It's not like I get the ball a ton, so it was he was excited just to see me get the ball and um, be able to do something cool with it. I think. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was a hard pill to swallow. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it was, honestly. <laughs> Anything else on the record? Did you play any uh, O line in high school ever? Um, I mean, I played O line um, like growing up in Pee Wee football or Pop Warner. Um, didn't actually switch to tight to tight end until like started high school. Um, but I mean, even in high school, my role was. Uh, like a blocking tight end, so I, and a lot of times you're running behind me and one of my uh, like one of my best friends on the team who plays at UC Davis. Um, so like I would say like I didn't, but like I also kind of did. <laughs> I mean, it was used as such. Yeah, I do like to swim. <laughs> um, not as much as I would like. Normally, I like to use it as like a um, like after games to like flush out and stuff, but. I haven't really been able to so much this season. Coach Chalk actually said that you're, he's like, talk to his teammates, watch his, his huddle. They know what you're capable of doing as a, as a playmaker. I'm wondering if they, how many of them know what you're capable of in the pool? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. We had a, a pool workout in the off season where I got to, I got to show a little bit of what I can do in the pool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs>